Hello and welcome to this month's drawing tutorial. This month we're going to draw a portrait of an attractive woman at a three-quarter profile. So you can't see the shape of the nose, so it's not a full profile. Notice you can see one full eye and one partial eye. This is what helps to determine that it's a three-quarter profile. So it's going to affect the shape of the lips and what's tricky about this vantage point of a face is that you can't do everything in terms of the eye length because you can't see this full eye and so in this case especially it's going to be really really handy to lay out a grid system if you haven't done that before start by measuring your reference material I always print mine out on paper if you have a photograph you can tape it to plain paper and then make your marks on the outside on the paper so you measure the length and the width and then you're going to set up a proportional square or rectangle on your drawing paper. It doesn't need to be the same size. You can size it up and down so you can make it as large as you want. Just make sure that it's exactly proportional. Then you're going to measure off increments to divide the outside length and width into these little sections and label them 1 through 9 and A through I. Label them the same top and bottom, so I've used numerical labeling top top and side to side is alphabetical and then I've done that same labeling on my paper and once that is done then you can use this exterior grid to lay out the shape of the portrait so it's going to be a lot more efficient especially for the beginning artist it's going to help you to have really good accurate results um, and it's really not that much work so once you have that grid laid out, you're going to look for things on the reference material like where the shapes cut the outside of the grid. So here, if I extended this shape of the hair, it's between the 5 and the 6, much closer to the 6. I'd find the bottom of the chin by using a triangle like this, laying the bottom against those two G's or F's and find that the bottom of the chin is here at F and a half. I'd also like to find the side of the face so it's right at five in this case. And the grid is just going to help me to lay out those large shapes, the face, the hair, the neck, and transfer them quickly to my drawing paper. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here's that five, six point, that's where the hair cuts. So I'll make that same corresponding mark on my drawing paper. And normally I would work this stage really lightly. The, here's the bottom of the hair. It starts at about C and then swoops down to about C and a half. So here's C and a half. Here's C. I can just kind of really vaguely mark how that hair is going to swoop. Um, anyway, I would usually do this really lightly, but I want my marks to be more visible, so I am going to use the charcoal pencil to do even the outline, the outline sketch of these initial shapes. So it's going to be just a little bit darker than normal. But here's the bottom of the chin, right on that F and a half point, and I'm just kind of quickly sketching in the shapes using that grid. As you go along, when you have some messy lines, go ahead and clean them up. Always use a kneaded eraser because it doesn't leave crumbs behind and it's really good for blotting out areas to lighten or rubbing out lines that were mistakes. So it's very very handy that way. Then once I have the basic shape of the head, I can quickly sketch out shape of the neck should be about here lining up with about the seven at the top and then cutting over so here's the seven and then it gets really skinny and it's at about eight and a quarter so if you give yourself marks for where the thing starts and where it's supposed to end then it's a simple matter to just fill in the line between those two points the neck arcs over like this, the hair 
It's going to end at about six and a quarter and about here on her chin and I can just draw down that hair shape as well. Then there's an the ear. The bottom of the ear is falling right on E. So that's also going to be the edge of the um, face there. And then this hair curls around to be about in line with the ear. So once you start using a grid to help lay out the shapes, then the shapes themselves become accurate enough that you can use them to place other shapes because you know that the first shapes are in the right place. So now I need to put down the eye. I'm using my grid. I see that the eye bottom lines up with D and the corner of the eye with 7. So there's a D7. But for the interior corner of the eye, we're not quite so lucky because it's not straight on six. It's a little bit uh, like six and a quarter. And the bottom of the eyes are at an angle because her face is at a slight tilt. So that's about B, C, and lower D, E. B, C, about here for the bottom of the eyes. And then a guideline for the nose. The nose is at a diagonal that goes through about seven and two, but that's not very accurate. So the bottom of the nose should be above the E. So if I put a mark down at the E, I know that the bottom of the nose is going to end above that and go clear to the edge of the face. So it almost it touches and then it swoops up and I have this curving shape that goes to the hairline I just sketch in the eyes really vaguely to begin with. Let's see if they can look even remotely accurate. And right now things look really wonky. That's okay. It's part of the drawing process. So don't be afraid if your sketch looks really wonky and weird at this point. You're just moving shapes around and you're looking for shapes, not lines. So if you can just concentrate on trying to see the shapes as shapes and not as lines, not trying to outline the features, then you're going to be farther ahead than the artists who do outline. Let's see how I erase my shapes and I redraw them still lightly this is just the process of refining. I refine the shape once I'm sure that it's in the right place, or pretty sure. You know, maybe I'm not absolutely certain. That's why this stage is still done really, really lightly, so that you can make changes. You want to be able to move things around and make some changes for quite a while. And I'm putting those features in within the guidelines. to double check where that bottom of the hair should be. About a quarter after C, going down to C and a half. So make sure that those are accurate. And the 
top was about quarter after C, I said, so I have her eye too high. That is the problem. So that's why you need to erase. Erase and start again. Okay, so if this is the angle, this is the hair redrawn, and that's going to affect everything else. And now that line for the bottom eyes looks more accurate. So this is a step that you need to do in your own studio when you're just looking for the shapes of those features, not afraid to make mistakes, erase and redraw as needed until everything is fitting on the face. And trust your own eyeballs, basically. Now if things don't look right at all, take some measurements, use your graph, and figure out what could have gone wrong. See now changing that changed a lot of stuff. So I've got the eyes that are here. But then the, ch the cheek is going to swirl down like this and I have it swirling out where it should swirl in. This is slowly looking more accurate. There's the guideline for the top of the lips. It's right on the E. Remember, even at this angle, there are some things that do stay constant. So the, there should be a line that goes from the corner of the lips to the middle of the eye. And that is the same here. And then the distance between the middle of the eye and the bottom of the chin is cut about in half by the bottom lip. So the bottom lip is about half that distance. Then for the next while, long while, depending on how this stage is going for you, sometimes things just snap together and sometimes everything seems to want to fight you. But what you're going to do is just refine those features until they look right in terms of each other. And there's really no trick to it, it's just a matter of taking your time and watching, being very, very observant of where everything goes, refining and redrawing as needed until you're satisfied, and then you erase those guidelines and we can start going forward with the shading. So let me put a little bit of time into this um, off camera while I do this fussy business of just refining those features. And then we'll come back to it. Looks like her nose angle is a little off. As you refine, by the way, don't redraw things that aren't looking right. So D and a half, a little below E. Okay, try to fix them. The nose was way too high, so now if it's at this line, then that should make things snap into place a little bit better. Anyway, don't just redraw and redraw over the top of lines that are wrong, because then you're just darkening your mistakes. Oh yeah, see that? That makes things look a lot more accurate. So when you're when you hit a rut, you hit a sticky spot, and you just can't get the features to look right, stop, remeasure, use your graph, fix it, and then push forward. And then use a few checkpoints to check yourself too. So you're looking not just for the positive shapes, but the negative shapes also. The negative shapes are the shapes between shapes. <laughs> So the shape between the nose and the lips, 
this line, not looking at the face, but looking at the background, the way that it carves the line of her face out. The darkness of her hair and the shape of her neck makes this a definite shape. And those are shapes that you look for, not just the shape of the neck itself, but the shape of the hair because it helps to define the neck. So these shapes up against each other create the impression of lines. You're drawing the line, but you have to see both shapes in order to find that line and put it down accurately. So I'm going to be working on that off camera. I'll come back to you when my face has accurate features. And then I'll show you how to proceed from there. Okay, I have my features in better arrangement now and so I'm ready to show you the next step. So what you can do is just work on erasing those um, guidelines. I feel as though the angle of the head here isn't quite right so I'm just going to round it up a little bit more and then I'm going to keep the features nice and light but still well developed enough so that they don't get completely lost in this next step because the first thing that we're going to do after drawing the features on the face is to add the base skin tone. So no one has paper white skin. No matter how light the skin is, you're always going to do this step. So you take your charcoal pencil or your graphite pencil on the side. I'm going to turn the paper so that it's most comfortable for me to fill in the skin tone on um, uh, with control. So before you start this, if you want to have a really nice clean border around the outside of the picture when you're done, you can go ahead and protect your borders with some masking tape or painter's tape. They sell in hardware sections and paint stores. I like the painter's tape because it actually has really low tack, so it won't tear your paper. Masking tape, you have to tape down to your clothes a few times to make it low tack, but painter's tape, not so much. So I'm just going to put down the tape on the places where I know I'm going to be drawing. You don't need to do everything. Tamp it down. Very good. Then I'm going to hold my, pa my pencil at the end and I'm going to go back and forth, not scribbling, but just carefully filling in the tone over the hair and the skin and she has light skin tone so I'm going to go fairly light especially when I get down there but you don't need to worry about matching the tone at all in this point if you're using charcoal and then you blend it the way I blend with a chamois cloth what you're going to find is that this first pass is almost completely smoothed out so it doesn't even really exist anymore she has a highlight on her hair and I'm going to avoid the light there even from the very beginning. So there's this light ring. Just work around it. Then start going into the face the same way. But see, I'm just barely grazing the surface of the paper here. I'm going to work around the eyes very 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 light delicate you're definitely not bearing down on the pencil at all during this stage because you want all of those marks to be well blended and you want it to be light enough that you can still pull out nice clean highlights with a kneaded eraser 
You can gently curl it back and forth like this to follow the contour of the cheek. But if you're doing it right, you're not going to be able to see any strokes at all after the blending process, I mean. Right now you, you can. You just fill it in. Go down into the neck and the bottom hair down here as well. Okay, then take out your chamois cloth. This is my chamois cloth. It's just a chamois, but they sell it specifically in art stores. So it's not like a car chamois. Wrap it around your finger so you don't have a wrinkle. You have a nice smooth surface. And then you're just going to use circle strokes and blend that skin tone. And now you can see what I mean about how it just blends away. It's nice and light very smooth because of the chamois but it gives you a nice base tone to work with and you can't see any strokes anymore at all I didn't put any tone on the very outside edge because it's side lit so if you look at the picture you can see that there's this rim of highlight there so that lends itself well to uh, the blending pass because I can't get all the way to the end without smearing on the outside. Since I didn't put any tone there anyway, I don't need to blend it and I don't need to smear anything. I'm going to pull the hair in the direction of hair growth, but the skin I'm going to circle stroke. And honestly, you can't really tell a difference at this point. There. Now I pull right through the highlights on the hair. So you just get a little bit of a brushing through there. This is not a solid white ring and that looks really good. So now we're ready to move on to the next step. Now for the next step in the face, we can start pushing those lines out again. Um, but you also need to decide if what kind of you're going, uh, what kind of back. But you also need to decide what kind of background you're going to do. This has an easy gradient background that draws the eye over into these corners, so that it's not like any there's. It's not like there's a big nothing, and it's just face and nothing. So this is actually really important to the composition. So I'm going to teach you how to do a gradient like this. Very very simple. I am going to have to go back on my word though you are going to have to tape it all off. So let's just get some more tape around here. No problem. And try not to touch your drying paper. The oils from your hands will make little imperfections in the paper where the tone doesn't lay right. And it is an unfixable problem. It's oil. So it will just sort of make these spots. You can't erase, you can't blend smoothly, just sort of stuck with them. So if it happens to you, you can either start over, you can live with it. it happened to me right here a little bit. Don't know if you can see that or not, but that is what happened. And that is why I'm taking the time to warn you. So I'm going to start by just cleaning off the surface of the paper with my kneaded eraser that I don't have any unwanted ripples, bubbles, anything like that. Then it's really dark in the upper and lower corner and it circles around like this. So that's exactly what we're going to do as we lay the tone in. Since she is on the right side and I'm right-handed, I feel like I can go ahead and lay in the background 
before adding too much detail to the face. If it was the opposite, since I'm right-handed, I'd constantly be smudging it, so I would wait to do this step until the very last thing. But as it is, this is fine. So I'm going to start by going across the top the same process except that as I go closer to her face I'm going to lighten up my strokes and as I push away I'm going darker. Let me fill in the background, the whole background that same way. So this is how the background looks before any blending has been done. So this is just strokes with the charcoal pencil. Notice that they all go the same direction. That is really important. That's going to make sure that you have the most smooth gradation as uh, possible. Then I'm also going to add some more tone to the top of her hair where it's very dark. And I'm working now in the direction of hair growth. So I'm just going to focus my attention in this top corner and if you need to, you can flip your drawing around so that you can get all the way up to the tape. Let's see here how it doesn't quite get up there. Just flip that drawing. And make sure that your dark shape follows the same curvature that you see on the drawing material or on your reference material. Something's giving this a weird random stripe. Oh well. So I fill it all in. Just a bit of shadow at the bottom as well, not nearly as dark. We'll get there later. But here at the side of the face, it gets dark again. And then on the cheekbone, for the cheekbone, I'm going to change my direction and follow the curvature of the face again. And I like to do a little bit of work on the boundaries of the shape, like this, and then just fill it in. That way I don't find after the um, shading is done that I've been focusing my efforts in the wrong shape. Add a little bit of a shadow shape here around the eye. Just a little bit where you see the darkest shadows on the face. Under the chin. This portrait is unique because um, the shadows on the face, there just aren't a lot. The lighting conditions are a little bit different. So there aren't a lot of shadows, but the ones that are there are very distinctive, very dark, which is why we're doing this stage right now, sort of working the whole portrait and the background up together. And then, of course, this dark hair down here, which is just falling straight down. So notice how I use a lot of more control and little short strokes when I'm working by the shape of the face, and then I can pull down more quickly especially because that tape is there protecting the bottom line. I can just go right down. The tape will make sure I have a nice clean line. Okay, now I can get that chamois cloth again. I'm going to start in the face 
because this is going to make my chamois cloth really, really dirty. So I'm just going to circle stroke, blend in those cheekbone shadows. Since I have the additional tone, it's not going to blend out quite as light, which is exactly what I want. And if I don't want it to blend out as much, I can tamp it down like this instead of wiping it. This will help to keep the tone on the paper. Outline of the cheek, uh, the jaw, right there. Here, but there. I'm just going to add some additional shadow shapes using the chamois on my finger and relying on the fact that it has a lot of tone on it already. So I can pull some shadows down in the neck, under the jaw, and then work in the hair and in the background. Now, in the background, I'm going to start on the light side and blend into the dark because I don't want my lights to get too dark. So I'm just going to start here, circle stroke around like this. Starting up next to her face so that I get that really good light. It's not going to be ruined. Ooh, be careful. Don't smudge it too much. see some fingerprints in there. All right, then I can start going into the darker area here. Still doing some circle stroking, but then I'm just going to, ugh, the blending of this is harder than putting down the tone initially. So remember that your chamois cloth lifts the color as well as blends. So if you get some streaks that you don't want, you can use the chamois cloth to sort of wipe them away. Then you have to circle stroke and go back and forth and just change up your direction based on what's happening. Then for the darkest area that I want to have stay really dark, I'm going to use a large tortillon, just this. This is a size six circle stroke and really mash it down right into that tape so that'll stay very very dark and then I just blend it not all the way over but only into the area that I've already blended with the chamois cloth so see how I stop when I reach this midtone I'm still lining up quite a bit so I might need to go over this a second or third time just to ensure that I can get those really rich darks that are so attractive to our eye. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing in her hair using that tortillon to pull things down and then since it has a narrow side to it I can use that to pull through the highlights and start developing those hairs back to the tortillon or back to the chamois cloth to start trying to blend this really, really lightly across from dark to light so I get more of that gradient. 
I'll do more of this off camera because it's tedious to watch. But let's go back to the portrait now. And while I'm working on the portrait, I'm going to cover up the background with a clean piece of paper. Keep your reference close. Get a nice sharp pencil and now you're going to be doing the detail work in the face. So I'm going to have my pencil at hand. Ooh, look how dirty my whites of my eyes got pretty smudgy. So I'll use the kneaded eraser to pluck those whites out again before I start. And then I'm going to add some tone to the eyes, darkening up around the irises. She has these really unique false lashes. So they're very dark and absurdly long actually. So they're sort of fun to put in. Don't do too much work on those lashes yet because there's still more work we need to do in the face. But in this stage, I'm just pulling out some of those lines that are getting lost and adding a bit of tone to the features. So a little bit in the nostrils, a little bit in the irises and the pupils, a little bit to the outer lids just things like that. And we work it up all together as one big piece. So we have some detail in the hair. I might add a little bit more detail in those hairs. So I'm breaking into it so that those stri so that the block of dark isn't quite so stripy. And then the line of the nose is actually not a pencil line, it's a highlight. So instead of drawing it with a pencil, I'm going to pull that out with my kneaded eraser. You can just mash your kneaded eraser into a very fine blade and pull out those lines. Add a little bit of additional shadow to the nose. And then in this stage, when you're adding the shading to the features, you're going to put that chamois cloth away and you're going to do the blending with stomps and tortillons. Use the largest ones that you can for the area and then just blend with circle strokes so that you get the smoothest finish possible. You can go into the eyes quickly fill in the iris. Notice that I kept the highlight bright from the very beginning. If you lose your highlight, pull it out again before you add tone. And then just add the detail around the highlight so that it really pops out. The lips are really shiny because she's wearing lip gloss. So just keep, to keep this shine, you need to really pay attention to the highlights on the lips. Add tone everywhere else. Nice dark line between the lips. So it looks like they're slightly parted. And then you can blend those lips with the tortillon.
and then also just pull out the highlights again with the kneaded eraser. So this is the process where you push the drawing up slowly in stages by adding some tone, blending it out, picking out highlights, and you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now that I've done this first pass, I'm darkening up the segments between the highlights on these lips, making them look a little bit more apparent. And then I might need to downgrade to a smaller blending tool as I talk, as I start blending smaller and smaller pieces of the puzzle. So the face is like all of these interlocked pieces and you start with the largest ones, the head itself, and you add the smaller ones on top, like the features, and then the smallest shapes within those features, like the shadows on the features and the highlight shapes on the features, and it just stacks up like that, piece by piece by piece. Okay, so let me push this forward a little bit more off camera, work some more on that gradation, and I'll come back to you when we're ready to tackle the next challenge. Now I've blended the cheek more and I've blended the line of the jaw more, so I'm in a better position to add those really dark darks on her eyes. Do that with just that same sharp pencil. Go really dark with the pupil and some places around the iris. Then just add with sharp single downward strokes you're going to add those lower lashes. And the upper lashes as well. And make them with little individual strokes so that you can still see through the lashes. just like you can on the picture. Don't forget to add just a little bit of pigmentation in the corners of the eyes. So it'll look like skin or like the eyeball is rounded. I'll do the same thing on this eye. If you need to, make sure that you sharpen your pencil between these eyes so that you can have really delicate, dark lashes. They're one of the most striking parts of this portrait. And then you're going to have some hairs that come down all the way to the eye like this. Just refer to your reference material as you add some of more of these individual hairs. And that sharp pencil is going to come in handy for adding the small little pieces of hair that you can see that go through the highlight. See how I just go up, up, down, down, some up, some down. I want the bottom hairs to be apparent as a sort of a choppy pattern. They should cover up the place where her eyebrows would be, because you can't see her eyebrows in this piece. And 
The difficulty with things like this is that it's natural to make them too much of a pattern. So you make the hairs too regular looking, then they wind up looking artificial. So just take a break from doing the hairs after you've done a few like this much and move on to something else, then come back to it. Otherwise, that same movement over and over and over again will start developing into a, a pattern. Like I said, well, I'll just blend through just one way, then the other. Just those don't look like so many pencil lines. And if you need to, you can draw some more highlights by erasing in that general section with your kneaded eraser again. All together, it looks like very realistic hair. If you need to blend in the eyelashes, you can do that. And the skin around the eyes. If you have any really precise lines, you probably are going to need to blend those out. You don't want there to be lines on the face. Blend in the corners. And then in this stage, just don't be afraid to go really dark. Every interesting drawing has some strong contrast, so that's what you're shooting for here in this stage. You're going really nice and dark. The highlights on the lips, pupils in the eye, the eyelashes, the nostril. Anything that you see is dark on the reference material, don't be afraid to match that tone. And the shadow by the face, I've darkened up probably four or five times by now, and I'm still needing to add a little bit more dark. So it's a stage by stage process where you're building up, building up, building up your darks. And I did the gradation by wiping with a paper towel back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this until it finally got smooth enough that it looks more like what I see on the reference material. For the hair down here, I just need to take my time, work really carefully next to this jaw so that I have a precise line that doesn't look like a line. just a very clean, strong contrast edge. And once I have that defined, I can work my way down the hair more quickly, darkening up those strands of hair, and then do the same thing next to the neck, really outline that, fill it in as dark as you can. And then you can just stroke down in the direction of the hair growth. So let me do this last pass of darkening up those extreme darks, blending, pulling out highlights, and I'll come back one last time and show you the final result. After adding some really intense darks and then blending with my finger, that's the best way to make them absolutely solid like this. They need to be black, black. The best way is actually to just rub over them with your finger. Um, then I just pulled out a few tiny hairs going the opposite direction with my kneaded eraser. That's only going to work in the lightest areas because those blacks are too dark. And then it's a matter of just going over and cleaning up small little lines, the lines of reflected light, you know, the line next to her face, the line next to her nose, pull out a highlight on the nose, pull out the highlight on her cheek, and do all of that fussy little stuff. 
looks like I might want a couple more hairs right up here. If you have anything that's pretty light, you can do those hairs in a graphite pencil. Graphite gets sharper than charcoal because it's harder. And so I, I really like using it even in my charcoal drawings for the hair in really delicate little areas like that. And then when you're satisfied with it, just carefully peel off your tape See how well that painter's tape releases off the page. There's no question of it tearing the paper. It's really great stuff. And there's your finished drawing. So, here's the reference that we started with, here's the drawing that we ended with. So uh, drawing a three-quarter portrait is made a lot simpler if you rely in the, beginning er in the beginning steps on that exterior grid, because you can't use the measuring system with the eyes. So it's a little bit trickier. Um, it's a little trickier than a front forward portrait, but if you use these different measuring techniques, you can really get there. Notice how this nice gradiated background really does add punch to the portrait. You have this dark and this dark. These darks here help it to make the entire composition a lot more interesting. So your eye wants to go all over the place, not just boom to her eyes, boom to this dark hair. So this is one that I hope that you'll download in your own studio and try at home. It has a lot to teach you about different drawing techniques. Uh, you're going to have to be work really, really hard to keep your paper very clean. You can see where I accidentally touched my paper before I had any tone on it, and the oil from my fingers is there to stay. So this is never going to be a frame quality portrait because of that. When you're laying out your drawing, make sure that you have new paper that has never been touched by anybody and always either wear some white cotton gloves, new ones that won't smudge on anything, or keep that paper down the whole time so that nothing can possibly touch the paper. And then you can get just a perfect gradation that'll be even more eye-pleasing. So that completes this month's drawing tutorial. I hope you've learned some things you can take away and I hope you join me again next month for another one. Thanks so much for watching.